So it starts the chapter on differential amplifiers, which is chapter 4 in Razavi's book. Now, as you know, the most common form of amplifiers that we encounter in the world has two inputs and one output. So that's the op amp. And the output is given by some voltage gain A times the difference between the two inputs V1 and V2. There is actually another class of amplifiers which have a differential output also. But in this course, we will not study that uh, configuration. Now, until now, all the amplifiers we have studied in this course had one input and one output. So now, now let us think about how we can arrive at a two input amplifier starting with the one input amplifier. So we had this circuit and now uh, when with VO1 equal to some gain times V in 1. Now we want two inputs. So clearly we need two circuits, similar circuits so that two inputs can be applied. So we say well okay let us do this. So there are two inputs V in 1 and V in 2 and there are two outputs V O 1 and V O 2. So if we take the output or define the output as a difference between the two outputs V O 1 and V O 2 then of course V O can be written as A into V in 1 minus V in 2 assuming of course identical transistors and equal R D values only then will this A be the same for the circuit on the left and the circuit on the right. This is fine for a differential output circuit. But most often we need a single output referred to ground as that uh, op amp circuit shows. So, oops, sorry, slowly I should do this slowly. So we have, so now we start with this. And then he say, well, what we want is that, let us say one of these in outputs, VO1 or VO2, should be equal to some gain into the difference of the two inputs. This is what we want, a single output. So that, and what does this imply? What this implies is that when V in 1 changes, VO2 also should change. That is what this equation requires. Our circuit of course V in 1 has no effect on V in V O 2. So let's look at this analogy. So I learned about this analogy from a Dr. Kaushik Saha. Uh, he is uh, he's a great teacher although he is in the industry uh, has been in the industry all his life. Uh, okay, so le let's think about uh, this balance uh, with two pans and uh, something that holds the two pans. Uh, now if we think about this balance, if the amount of weights in both the pans are equal, then the pans are balanced and they will hold their positions uh, at let us say some reference x equal to zero. If we put more weight in one pan, then this, let's say this pan, then this pan goes down by a certain displacement and this pan goes up by the same displacement. That is the property of a balance because it is being held. Uh, so this point here is being held constant so that one goes down, the other goes up. And as a result of one going down, one going up, the net displacement of the two pans is zero or the sum of the two displacements is zero. So that is a property of a balance. Now imagine that uh, this, this thing that is holding the whole assembly together is not completely rigid, but it has actually a, a spring. It is a spring that doesn't move much, but nonetheless it is a spring. All right. Now suppose we put equal weights in both the pans, all right. Ideally, if when we put equal weights in both the pans, nothing happens, the, pan, the pans don't move up or down. But if there is a spring here, then because of the additional weight, the spring will get pulled down and both the pans will move equally down 
uh, a little bit depending on how the strength of the spring all right so we'll come back to this uh, equal weights just in a minute uh, this is what we want to explore first so this is what we want now what we want to do is we want to modify this circuit such that if one input changes then the the voltages in both the arms of this uh, circuit should change so in other words if you look at the analogy of the balance if one voltage goes down the other voltage should go up uh, so we say well the voltage is should let's say this voltage increases and this voltage goes down then this voltage should go up and the such that the sum of the changes in the two voltages is zero or equivalently we would could say that if one voltage increases the current in this branch increases the current in this branch decreases such that the sum of the changes in currents is zero so how do we achieve this perhaps you have seen this before uh, either way you could pause and think about how you could modify this circuit so that this uh, requirement is achieved the answer of course is that we introduce a tail current source so the, we introduce a current source and it is called a tail current source and that tail current source is the equivalent of this in the balance so the balance holds the assembly together so that if one goes up the other comes down this tail current source ensures that the sum of the changes in the two currents remains the same all right so let us let us look at this this of course is the differential amplifier two transistors with inputs connected to their gates the sources tied together and connected to a constant current source so that any changes in currents are uh, cancelled so with each other okay so qualitatively suppose we say that if v in one increases if v in one increases the current in m1 will increase because the gate voltage has increased and if this current increases the fact that the total of the two currents is constant would force this current to decrease so that vo2 will be affected even by a change in v in one all right so th that is the basic principle of a differential amplifier now suppose both v in one and v in two increase together by the same amount and as we have seen before and we'll see in more detail in the next lecture if both increase by the same amount then the the source voltage the common source voltage will increase by the same amount as the gate voltages have changed such that the currents in both the branches remain constant and the sum remains i0 and therefore the uh, voltage is vo1 and vo2 don't change because the currents have remained constant all right so that is again a property of uh, having equal voltage is being applied but now if i0 which we if instead of it being an ideal current source is a mosfet so we are going to put a mosfet here then if we increase both v in and one and v in two equally then the source voltage will increase and as a result of the increase in the source voltage channel length modulation of the mosfet here will cause the current to increase a little bit and so the output voltages will also decrease a little bit just like the spring in the balance analogy all right and that of course is the common mode gain which is caused by the non ideality of the current source all right so this is i am cutting this lecture short because next lecture we'll do a lot of dc analysis cases uh, this lecture was just to introduce uh, the concept of a differential amplifier